What's up folks, I'm Spius and this time I'm going to rant about electricity. In Stardust, the game I'm developing, many core mechanics are built around electricity. You are the ship computer, which means you're powered by electricity yourself, and you have to expand your grid in order to connect and control various devices on your ship. Designing and implementing the electricity system was one of the biggest and most interesting programming challenges I've ever had an opportunity to work on. I have been continuously reiterating the implementation and have just finished a full rewrite from scratch of what is now the Electricity Grid version 7. I'm not kidding, I rewrote it many times before. Version 6 was pretty good and I could have kept it forever, but it had a few flaws that you wouldn't normally experience unless you had a massive endgame spaceship with a network of several thousand devices. Let's walk through the implementation details of the old system to pinpoint where the problems are. Also, most concepts of the old system are still relevant in the new one. What exactly is an electricity grid? Here we have our ship computer, a few disk modules, a couple of solar panels, some matter reactors, a heater, a furnace, a battery, and so on. However, these are not connected to anything, so let's create a grid by linking all these devices through a couple of connectors. Every time we create a link between two devices, the electricity system has to recalculate itself to figure out how many grids do we have and to know which device belongs to which grid. In computer science terms, it's a disjointed data set and we have to find all the multi-way trees in it, or you can say it's a graph problem. The algorithm I had for finding and recalculating the interconnected graphs started out as something simple, where we would loop through all the connectors and try to assign the connected devices to some grid. We would keep doing that until every node was assigned. It was a little dumb, but it worked pretty well, at least until edge cases started to pile up. What if the connector or the device was damaged? What if the device is switched off? What if the device was destroyed in an explosion right before the grid recalculation started? What if two grids are linked through a regular electricity node like a solar panel? What if that node is switched off? Should there be two grids or one? Many of the edge cases involved checking the device state, which was hidden deep in the object-oriented structures. That was the first mistake looping through objects with hierarchies and querying those hierarchies. It works well at small scales, but when you go into large numbers and do it with a simple brute force algorithm, you start getting the death by a thousand cuts effect. The reason why it's slow is in the way we use RAM. RAM stands for random access memory, and random access is exactly what happens when you're looping through lists of objects as you would typically do in object-oriented software. Here's an illustration showing how it works. You have a list of continuous data which holds pointers to the objects you are iterating over. Those objects have references to other objects we need to access in order to get our data. So the data is effectively scattered all over the place. And while computers are extremely fast, doing all those jumps to collect the data from random locations in RAM is relatively slow, but it gets even worse some data is dynamic, involving simple calculations or comparisons, meaning that we don't have to just find the data in memory, but also run some logic on it before it can be used. The result of this is that something that works extremely fast with 300 devices would start to bog down when you had 3000 or more. Due to the dumbness of my old algorithm, the amount of computations required to detect the graphs in the disjointed data set was also nonlinear. So what would happen when you had a big ship and wanted to link two connectors? A frame stutter. This of course wasn't acceptable, so I fixed it by making things worse. I moved the grid rebuild logic into a coroutine, allowing the rebuild to take more than one frame. Now, a little tip for Unity developers out there. If you feel you have to use a coroutine to solve a problem, you're likely going to create an additional problem. Don't use coroutines. Let's get back to the electricity rebuild coroutine and figure out why is it so bad to do it this way. Imagine the scenario. You have a massive spaceship that gets hit by an asteroid. The asteroid impact is something that does not happen over one frame either, as it creates a large explosion that has to damage multiple tiles, which causes them to be removed, and there's some pretty heavy logic there that also cannot fit in a single frame budget. Therefore, the explosion creates a queue of commands that have to be executed as fast as your computer can handle. 
It can take some milliseconds for the queue to be fully consumed, and during that time every single frame destroys a bunch of tiles. Now some of those tiles will be devices that are plugged into the electricity grid. Destroying such a tile causes the grid to recalculate. Now if grid recalculation does not happen immediately, some other device can get removed the next frame, causing another rebuild. Now we have a potential race condition that we have to handle. Rebuild needs to either abort and restart immediately, or the tile removal should be blocked until the rebuild is complete. Another example of this is when a large fire would be spreading, damaging the electronic devices and causing constant disconnections. That leads to the same multiple slow concurrent rebuild issue. Making the grid rebuild instant would already give significant benefits, however it wouldn't be enough. Because there is also the grid simulation part that wouldn't always fit into the budget of one frame and had to be executed in yet another core team. That was so bad. Let's do a brief overview of how the electricity flow was simulated. The algorithm was looping through all the devices in the grid and passing an object called energy state from one device to another like a hot potato. Each device could do something with the energy state and pass the modified state further. The device would also run some logic, like if it was a heater, it would change the temperature for the surrounding tiles, and so on. To make matters worse, some smart devices could produce electricity only as much as the demand was calling for, reducing the amount of fuel needed if the grid wasn't consuming as much as it could. This way of simulating the grid was really heavy and inefficient when the ships grew large. We had to lock the game clock in order for the grid simulation to finish before we could continue ticking other logic. And that was one of the main reasons why large ships couldn't run at 10x simulation speed as fast as smaller ships could. We constantly had to wait for the massive grid to rebuild or simulate its energy flow and other systems had to work around these rebuilds with a bunch of checks to see if the electricity system was not busy and could be queried. Now you may ask, why did you design this in such a bad way? You could have done a better job from the start, so you wouldn't have to rewrite it seven times to get it right. Well, I'm bad at programming. Another reason is that whatever you design in theory doesn't always stand the test of time, especially when you start accounting for the edge cases, something you did not anticipate in the original design that had to be added to the implementation later. Those late additions often have to work around the existing architecture and end up as ugly hacks or temporary workarounds with comments like fix me or to do refactor. The worst thing you can do to a software project is to ignore those fix me and to do refactor comments forever and keep adding more stuff on top of the dirty hacks that keep piling up over time. So refactor I did, or rather a rewrite from scratch. It took me about three weeks to get things to work again. The changes were so drastic that I had to change the code of every single electric device in the game. The new electricity system can rebuild and simulate the grid with mind-blowing performance. We still have the callbacks part, where the devices receive a method call every time electricity grid ticks, but that part is now completely decoupled from the grid rebuild and simulation. It can run separately using a simple queue, where every frame the game executes as many callbacks as it can to still run smoothly. There's a lot of room for additional optimizations here too, which I'll get to in time. How does the new system work and what makes it so fast? First, we no longer operate with hierarchical objects. Each electrical device creates and maintains a small piece of data in the form of a simple struct called electric node. This electric node gets registered with the new electricity system and all the nodes are kept close to each other in a native array where it takes up a single continuous region of RAM and requires no additional lookups or calculations to get crunched. The tree detection and recalculation part is done in a Unity job that is also burst compiled, which makes it blazing fast by default. But additionally, instead of using a self-invented dumb brute force algorithm, I did some research and found a union find algorithm that is designed to do this particular job on disjointed data sets in a very efficient and scalable way. As a result, the grid rebuild is so fast that it can happen immediately whenever it's needed no matter how many devices you have. That solves the first part of the problem. The second part is the electricity grid flow simulation. This one is a little more tricky, but in a nutshell, it works in the same way as the rebuild. We have all the data lined up in memory, we loop through it, 
collect all the production and consumption parameters, calculate how much every device has produced, consumed, which devices had deficit, etc. Then, when the simulation job is done, we loop through all devices once to synchronize the updated electric node structure. Up till this point, we're still in the blazing fast territory. We only operated on data so far, but most devices have to do something with that data. To handle that, we now have just one callback that any device can register through its electricity node component. When the node gets added to the electricity system, it transmits a message to all other components of the entity, and each component interested in the electricity grid updates has a chance to subscribe to this event. The electricity system maintains a list of these delegates, and it will loop through and invoke as much as it can every frame. If the amount of delegates is excessively long, it may take several frames to handle the whole list, but that doesn't block the electricity system from running further simulation or the game clock from ticking. It does not impact the gameplay in any bad way, as all devices will eventually receive their callbacks and will get the up-to-date state of the grid. And this execution doesn't use coroutines. That's it for this devlog, see you next time.